is currently manufacturing better CPUs for laptops, Intel or AMD? That's a big one, it's up there with, is there a god? But first of all, how did we manage to level the playing field to make the fight as fair as possible? What we were looking for were two identical platforms in absolutely every respect, the only differentiator being the CPU. And after some digging, we found two Asus Tough laptops that were nearly twins, the only difference being the CPU. So, in the blue corner, there's a Tough Gaming F15 powered by an Intel Core i7 12700H CPU, and in the red corner, a Tough Gaming A15 equipped with an AMD Ryzen 7 6800H CPU. Other than their brains, the two machines are identical. RTX 3060 GPUs, 16 gb of DDR5 RAM and 1TB NVMe SSDs, and the exact same cooling system. The laptops look the same, smell the same, and most important, they give us an undeniably even playing field. We've got four hot rounds coming up, both literally and metaphorically, so have some beer or soda if you're underage, grab some popcorn and make yourselves comfortable for an epic battle. Today's fight is not just between these two CPU models, in fact it is on a larger scale, as the two CPU models on our tough laptops are actually representing their respective product families. And given all that, it makes sense to start by comparing Alder Lake to Zen 3 Plus. We'll kick off with the Blue Camp because we've been testing a lot of laptops with 12th gen Intel Core CPUs lately, and this generation brings some significant new additions to the market. The release of the 12th gen Core CPUs for laptops marks the introduction of the Intel 7 concept. That's how the manufacturer chose to name its architecture, and even though it sounds a little like a conspiracy theory, I have a feeling this was done to trick the mass of enthusiasts still criticizing Intel for the 14 nanometer plus 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 story. So Intel 7 is actually a 10 nanometer architecture. Until recently, it was safe to say the battle between manufacturers was fought in this unit of measurement, especially back in the days when progress between generations meant moving from 32 nanometers to 22, for example. But nowadays, that difference from 10 to 7 or even 6 nano no longer matters that much. I've seen it on desktops, and I promise you the same principle also holds true on laptops. The Core i7 12700H we're discussing today comes with two different types of cores. On one hand, you have the P cores, which are the performance cores, and in addition, you have the E cores, focusing on efficiency. Put them together, and they make a balanced product good for heavy-duty tasks like gaming and video editing, but also capable of saving power when you're browsing, editing documents, or watching movies. And if any of this rings a bell, it's because we've seen this approach on ARM processors. I mean, the ones found in phones or new laptops, and more recently in Apple's compact desktops, which are actually ARM. Also, Intel's 12th gen brought DDR5 memory to mobile platforms, improved connectivity with USB 3.2 Gen 2 and Wi-Fi 6E. And now let's move on to the Ryzen 6000, which also shares some of these features. However, while not so long ago AMD didn't really have a foothold in the portable sector, the Ryzen 6000 changes all that. And it's the first time that a series of AMD laptop CPUs are challenging Intel's very comfortable place in this market. And I'm saying this because it's all also the first time that the CPU from the Red Camp reaches 5 GHz in boost. And that's not counting its more efficient architecture and better integrated graphics. And now let's do a direct comparison of the two processors. And actually these are exactly the models that people can afford but still deliver enough performance to mitigate the lack of a Core i9 or Ryzen 9. And for that of course we have a chart. And once you take a look at this specs chart you can clearly see the pros and cons of each CPU. The Intel Core i7 has more cores and more threads, but some of those extra cores are on the efficient side, and there are 20 threads in total. On the other hand, AMD has equipped the Ryzen 7 with 8 massive cores, together with 16 corresponding threads. And you'll see for yourself later on, in the actual tests, that even if Intel seems to have the upper hand here, the gap is nowhere near what you'd expect from a CPU with 6 cores and 4 threads extra. When it comes to cache memory, Intel uses 24 megabytes of smart cache memory. AMD went for a classic 3-level memory setup for a total of 20 megabytes. So Intel comes out on top from the specs perspective. When we come to the clock rate, both models reach 4.7 GHz in boost. Another interesting category is RAM compatibility, as AMD uses DDR5 RAM exclusively, while the CPU in the Blue Camp can also handle DDR4. That means Intel can integrate its chips into multiple devices across different market sectors. Next, 
I wouldn't consider onboard GPUs to be of paramount importance because we're talking about powerful CPUs that are often coupled with equally capable video cards. But if you're interested in the performance delivered by the built-in GPU, AMD wins by a landslide of rental. This is made possible by the Radeon 680M chip running 12 RDNA 2 graphic cores. As such, its performance is on par with that of an affordable desktop video card, which seems like a significant win for the Red Camp. Regardless of your choice though, both options guarantee an HDMI 2.1 connection capable of handling resolutions up to 8K. But setting aside the integrated graphics, this round's winner is the Core i7. Despite its 10 nanometer architecture, it has more cores, more threads, more cache memory, and combining raw power with energy efficiency is a more cutting edge solution. So as much as I'd like to side with the underdog, it's obvious that Intel has more experience when it comes to laptops. As for AMD, I think it deserves several rounds of applause for finally being a strong contender in this sector, but it's hard to beat what the 12700H has to offer here. Intel's core system made all the difference, together with the support for more RAM standards, which makes it more versatile in configurations. And the specs, while not that important, also weigh in favor of the Core i7, which is why I would say the first round ends favorably for the Blue Corner. AMD has tried and succeeded at offering an interesting feature set and with its 6 nanometer only TSMC architecture and clock speeds rivaling Intel's, it's not a bad choice at all. However, after this initial comparison on paper, it's time to see what each of these models can deliver in practice and find out which of the CPUs is more powerful. After all, specs mean nothing unless they are backed up by real-life performance. In the second round, I will be looking at raw performance, not power usage or temperatures, we'll cover that later. Let's start with 3D Mark and PC Mark. We used TimeSpy and Firestrike Extreme from the 3D Mark suit and conducted a full test with PC Mark. During the first round of tests, the Ryzen 7 outperformed the Core i7. Despite the narrow victory, this is still an achievement and we have to factor in the spec difference between the two CPUs. Let's move on to PC Mark, where the win goes to the Blue Camp, but again, it was really close and I guess it was the single core performance that won the day here. After this first test, the two CPUs needed a short intermission to cool down. Having returned from their break, I threw them into Cinebench, both the R20 and R23 versions. This is where we started to spot some differences and feel the single core edge of the Intel CPU. And even if I saw this coming, I didn't expect the small multi-core gap between the two CPUs. The i7 scores a 14-15% lead in single core tests, a fit consistent across testing sessions, but however, I find the multi-core results more fascinating. Bear in mind that the blue CPU has the upper hand because it features significantly more cores, but just like I said, this difference, although seemingly big, still seems small to me. Why? Because the on-paper specs state that Intel has 40% more cores and the 20% advantage when you consider the number of threads. And from this perspective, the performance margin is small. The last tests conducted were V-Ray Benchmark and POV-Ray. The results don't stray too far from the earlier pattern and the Core i7 came out on top once again. But since many people are getting these laptops for gaming, I wanted to test this aspect as well. After all, both systems come with an RTX 3060, so we got some firepower. I chose three major mainstream titles, namely CSGO, Cyberpunk 2077 and Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. The settings were cranked all the way up each time and I ran my tests in two different resolutions. Full HD and 1440p. The difference was more substantial here and the Intel CPU performed better in Counter-Strike. Again, it's definitely because of the single core performance. The distance between the two CPUs did close when playing the more serious titles though, so while there was a slight gap in Cyberpunk 2077 and Metro Exodus, it wasn't something that affected the overall gameplay. Even if the difference is often really tiny, the Core i7 prevailed against the Ryzen and scored slightly better in most tests. There were some exceptions, of course, but the second round's victory also goes to the blue corner. If I didn't have the gaming results, especially the Counter-Strike ones, I would have called it even and awarded the CPUs one point each. Yeah, I know, Intel bought you guys off and all that nonsense. Well, no, they didn't. Actually, they have no idea we are doing this. Nevertheless, these were the tests, both synthetic and in games, and the numbers don't lie. Still, the Ryzen 7 deserves all the praise. Even though it comes with weaker specs and has a shortage of cores, 
it manages to keep up with its competitor and even surpass it in certain scenarios. And that on-paper difference doesn't translate one-to-one -one into reality, which is important for the red corner and should lift AMD's spirits as they gear up for the round number three. The score is currently 2-0 in favor of the Intel CPU, but so far the AMD has put up an exceptionally good and clean fight. And now let's enter the third round of this rumble, one where the red corner has an advantage. The problem here is that the Core i7 laptop is much warmer even when idle. Any task, no matter how simple, immediately elevates the temperature of the Intel model to over 60 degrees. And the gaming laptop reaching these temperatures with the air conditioning on and with just a Chrome tab active is a serious issue. I actually managed to get the Intel laptop into throttle before I even started testing. And no, I'm not kidding, a few open apps, an installer, some YouTube music, and that was enough to get me past 90 degrees. All the while, AMD's CPU was chilling. It broke a sweat under heavy load, but nowhere near the Intel on the twin laptop. This is where I noticed the first big difference though. While both had the same cooling profile, the Asus TUF A15 was much louder under load, while TUF F15 was quiet but very hot. So I decided to take a closer look at how the two laptops perform during a gaming session and in a few other tests. I'll start with the clock rate, where they both scored well and reached their potential of 4700 MHz in turbo. The Core i7 reached a maximum of 4690 MHz, while AMD performed slightly better at 4755 MHz, a 65 MHz difference that might have mattered back in 2005. Moreover, although AMD reached a higher clock speed, it managed to do so at a significantly lower energy cost. In addition, the blue CPU's 105 watt power usage also amounts to more heat and a shorter battery life, compared to the mere 80 watt the Ryzen needs. And that 25 watt gap is certainly showing. The maximum temperatures are similar. AMD reached 93 degrees Celsius and Intel went as high as 95. Except that all the while the i7 was desperately struggling to survive the extreme heat, while you might say the Ryzen 7 had the air conditioning on. And that meant a trouble-free experience for the Red Camp, which didn't throttle at all while gaming and was only brought down by a few consecutive Cinebench R23 benchmarks. And also remember that my i7 got into a throttle running Chrome. So the winner of this round is hands down AMD Ryzen 7 6800H. With considerably lower energy consumption and better overall ratings than the competition, AMD's Ryzen actually impressed me. Although the chassis and cooling in the two laptops are identical, the software improvements and minor hardware differences made their mark. And here's how AMD gets an extremely important win, and from where I stand, one that will probably make a big difference when it comes to the final result. Yes, there is no doubt that Intel manages to perform better overall, but the 15-20% gap in the benchmarks and less than 10% gap in gaming is nothing compared to the user experience of a laptop that throttles up in a browser versus one that keeps it cool even during long gaming sessions. But keep in mind that this is a particular case and this behavior is happening on two extremely similar platforms, basically two identical laptops. Depending on the build, you might find laptops that perform better with the Intel CPU or AMD's advantage will only get bigger. The cooling system on each machine has a direct influence over this result, but the red faction is the clear winner in this particular scenario. Now that AMD has made a hugely important point, it's time to enter the final round. A round where we will spend less time discussing technicalities and focus more on what a regular user typically does on such laptops, namely the user experience. I was able to spend some time with both of them during my testing sessions and observe their behavior. Notice where they shine and which areas are lacking, and with everything I learned, I'm convinced this will be the most challenging round. I tried using both laptops simultaneously. I pressed install on both at the same time, gave them identical tasks, used the same tests, and I have to tell you that the Intel felt faster, snappier, throughout the entire session. This isn't new, however. I felt that also on Intel desktop CPUs before. On the other hand, it seemed to me that AMD would have clearly scored better in multi-core tasks if it had the same number of cores and threads. But when it came to heavy gaming, 3D benchmarks and other demanding tasks, the Ryzen 7 held its own heroically, putting both types of cores in the i7 to shame. Intel may have more cores, but at the end of the day, eight powerful cores are eight powerful cores, which are doubled by SMT technology 
for a total of 16 threads. Better still, the scales in this round are tipped in AMD's favor by one last crucial factor, the case temperature. Although I don't often talk about this, using these laptops for a longer amount of time has made me realize how uncomfortable a hot keyboard or case can become. I was able to use the Ryzen powered TUF A15 in my lap, while the Intel powered F15 was uncomfortable to handle even when placed on my desk. Wherever you touch it, the Intel model appears to be running a fever. The winner of this round is definitely AMD. And now that we're at the end of this showdown, it's time to pick a winner. One is stronger and faster, but hotter. And the other is cooler, more composed, but doesn't reach the same level of performance sometimes. Although it was quite hard to decide, I had to choose a victor. I think I'd go for the AMD, simply because I can't use a laptop that gets so hot. And the battery, the 25 watt lower power usage, favors the A15 setup. On the other hand, for those looking to squeeze every drop of performance out of their laptops, the F15 may be the better choice. If you push its cooling to the max and slap some headphones on, you can enjoy as much FPS per dollar as possible. But despite being an older platform, the Ryzen is more efficient, and with a lower price tag, I'd argue that you shouldn't splurge on the Intel version if you can find the AMD one in stock. And now that we had our say, it's your turn to answer this great question in the comment section. Intel or AMD? Which one is better in your opinion? Let's have a poll in the comment section and I'd be very glad if you could explain your choice. And after answering, if you found this video entertaining or even useful, subscribe to our channel while I'll start reading your comments.